the spiral is very present because we have this movement of spin and it is a way that you can disconnect from this um, material perspective of the time that we are and while we are decentered from this reality be centered or related to something bigger than this moment. I'd like to dive a little more into, you know, spiritual experiences and science. Before I do that, before I leave aside these particular exp experiments, though, I'm curious to hear, like, for yourself personally or what you've seen in other people, like, what, it's probably hard to explore, explore all of this because it's your mm -hmm. life, but, you know, maybe some examples of how this has, like, changed you or influenced your life, you know, as you live your everyday life, because you really are embodying it as you said which is the important thing it's like really yes. bringing everything together it's the concepts it's our brains it's our you know bodies living it it's it's the wholeness piece i think there and this is a very good uh comment um about this relationship with spirituality that you you connected you related to spiritual uh, the spirituality with the spiral um when when we look to the this word it is in the root of spirituality, this spirality, that uh, it is about the way that we may bring meaning to our lives, right? And to understand that our lives exists more other than the materialistic perspective of what we are living today. So this project and this initiative is very um, connected to these three pillars that for me, um, not only because of this initiative, but also in, is what I believe to in all the projects that I am connected today is that we need to find this interception, this point in between uh, art, science, and spirituality. Because it is in this point in between these uh, three different dimensions, let's say, that we can find our consciousness, that we can find how we deal with uh, our humanity, how we deal with our uh, ways of of being and living so i can tell you that in this uh in these 10 years i had many experiences that i understood that the way that i was looking to the world maybe in a more materialistic way as well uh it was only because of what i was thought until until today so we see what uh are our have references around as well so when i started to be more aware of the passing of the time and also more connected to uh the rituals and celebrations around the indigenous communities in brazil the african communities in the in diaspora there in brazil as well i could not only uh, learn more about what I'm sharing here, but also live and experience these kind of moments. So one example is, for example, inside of the uh, celebrations for the ancestors with the spiritual practices in the African communities there in Brazil. It is uh, these moments connected uh, to these events of nature called Orishas, uh, that are part of the Yoruba culture in Africa that went to Brazil, uh, split it in two different spiritual practices called Candomblé and Umbanda that are still practiced today there in Brazil. They understand that our connection with the ancestors, they are not in the past. They are not like a museum, like a memory that I talk about. Let's think about how grandpa or grandma would uh, live in that moment. No, this... Uh, Ancestors, they are present in the present. We can reach, then they are just not in a material form. But when we look to time through this perspective, we understand that when we honor our ancestors, we are also living in a way that we believe that we are going to be ancestralized, ancestralizable, that we can also like uh, walk the path to become an ancestor. And in this sense, uh, it's very beautiful to see that coming in practice, not only as a faith, not only as something that we believe, but something that goes 
to the way that we uh, that people relate to each other, relate to nature, relate to their uh, own families and their own goals in life. And this experience together, they, uh, for example, inside of the Yoruba uh, culture, as I mentioned, the spiral is very present because we have this movement of spin and it is a way that you can disconnect from this um, material perspective of the time that we are and while we are decentered from this reality be centered or related to something bigger than this moment and it is uh, be, uh, using this kind of technology using the movement of the body that uh, you are able to reach and connect and to hear uh, the learnings from your ancestors. This is a practice that after I started to be uh, connected and relate, uh, related in, in my culture there in Brazil, I started to understand that it's not that we have like a material perspective of the world and a spiritual perspective that is something aside, but all of these things, they are intertwined. They are both at the, uh, at the same time. And in the same with the indi my indigenous uh, connection in in Brazil, like I already uh, had the opportunity to be part of many different in ayahuasca ceremonies with different indigenous communities there in Brazil, and then when we are listening their stories and seeing they're using the power of the plants to relate to nature, it is also a moment that we understand that. No, they are not the ones that are less evolved, relate, uh, relating to myths to explain the nature. No, they are, actually they have their techno the technologies that we should be looking as the most advanced ones. They are able to reach these other layers of the dimension and reality in different ways that in the Western perspective, we are still, because it is how our science in the Western um is was developed and is based until today it is very materialistic but when i talk about the importance to look to art science and, and spirituality uh in this in transdisciplinary way we can see that even science is understanding that we have only one third of what exists in the universe being matter and two thirds are energy if we understand that today we also can think of all the all the possibilities that we were uh, ignoring until now because we were looking only to the matter, only to the materialistic aspect of the reality. In all of these other culture, cultures, these non-Western uh, perspectives, uh, they have mil millionaire uh, approaches for that. They have like for eons, their cultures are related to this these topics that I'm bringing now. So they are, these, are new, these are not new concepts. They are just alternatives uh, to the way that we are living today. They are other ways of being. And that's why I'm inviting people to, ex to experiment with these other ways of being, to experiment with other temporalities. Because I saw how it changed my way to relate to nature, to the reality, to my life, and to the long term as well. Because I started to take other kinds of decisions. I'm not focused, for example, into uh, build uh, a career or an empire that is around the material perspective. I'm looking to my relationship with time as, as one of the most important elements here. So how I can uh, build this temporality, this way of being that is connected to what I believe and in something that I can be... Uh, Honoring the past, enjoying the present, and building the future. When we have that, I believe that can be a scenario of abundance of a lot of people that, a lot of things that people would love to uh, reach. And I really believe that these tools, they can be like the tool set for, uh, for reach that. Yeah, I think that when you said the word abundance, too, I think that's something that gets very associated, maybe particularly when people try to be, you know, be present in the present moment. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really a lot about um, about this relationship, really, like you're saying, it's like about the relationship with time and and being able to 
sort of feel into it in this deeper level and this more exploratory way where it expands, expands us in so many ways. Um.